So Keith Furman defeats Jan Zavik. Unanimous 12 round decision, won every round. You can't argue with the result. Pretty much a flawless result. Obviously, it would have been nice to stop Zavik. Andre Berto managed to stop Zavik on facial injuries. But Berto had to take some shots himself along the way. Whereby he got hurt and he lost rounds. Uh, but Keith Furman did it without any problems. Didn't get hurt, was never in trouble, won every round. You know, what more can you ask? And he got some experience along the way. This was his first time going 12 rounds. I believe this was the first time he's been past 8 rounds. So he got some experience along the way as well. You know, good result, um, good experience. But I think I got to learn more about Keith Furman in this fight. You know, I've I've been following Furman for his last three or four fights, all right? His last three or four fights. And I've been impressed for the most part. But in this fight, he made a ton of mistakes. Now, he was getting away with those mistakes against Jan Zavik, who's a limited fighter. You know, Jan Zavik is very good defensively. He's very tough. Uh, you know, he, he keeps his hands up, tucks his chin down. It's very difficult to get a clean shot on target, right, against Jan Zavik. It's very hard to get a clean shot on him because he tucks up so tight. And when you do get a clean shot in, he's got a very good chin, all right? Um, but in terms of his offense, he's offensively extremely limited, Jan Zavik, right? Let's not beat around the bush. He's extremely limited offensively. And Keith Furman on the back foot makes a ton of mistakes, Right, under the pressure that Zavik was putting him, uh, he was making a lot of mistakes from the very first round. And a more skillful pressure fighter would have been able to exploit those mistakes. I think Keith Furman, he does have the ability to move around the ring and box, but I thought he looked awkward. I thought he looked, you know, uncomfortable, clumsy. Right when he was moving backwards, he he was getting caught with looping right hands. Zavik is not a quick fighter. Um, you know he I, I I just didn't I wasn't convinced by Furman on the back foot. I think Furman is much more comfortable and much more at home when he's coming forward and attacking rather than when he's on the back foot sticking and moving. Even though he got the result and all that kind of business, yeah, we know that that's all good against an opponent like Jan Zavik. But someone that is better offensively, who can really, you know, throw pinpoint punches with more speed uh, and precision than Zavik, I could see them giving Furman some serious problems, right? Now, Furman got through this fight with Zavik, you know, unscathed, completely unscathed. It was a good workout, and he'll learn a lot from this. You understand? As long as he continues to learn and, you know, improve himself... It'll be alright, but he does need to tidy a lot of things up in terms of his back foot game. You know, in my opinion, definitely. Um, like I say, I think he looks a lot more comfortable on the front foot coming forward. He's a big puncher, right? We know this about Keith Furman. That's why he's called one time. <laughs> he only needs to hit you one time. Uh, that's that's the tagline. Um, you know, he, he seems much more natural and much more comfortable on the front foot. You know, that's how it seems to me. Um, it's like it's, it's it's like you know, different fighters have different aptitudes, right? Floyd Mayweather looks more comfortable and more at home on the back foot than he does on the front foot, right? Uh, some fighters are just like that, you know. So with Keith Furman, it's the opposite. He looks much more comfortable on the front foot than he does on the back foot. So I think he's he's a good prospect, right? He's still a work in progress. But he's dangerous for anyone because of his power. He's obviously a big welterweight. Right? He's, he's already fought 154 pounds. He's a big guy. Right? He hits very hard. And um, he'll be dangerous for any of the top guys right now. He's apparently mandatory for Tim Bradley's WBO title. Um, that's an interesting fight. That's an interesting fight, Furman against Bradley. And I didn't mention this in my Bradley video, which I did recently. But Tim Bradley's a little guy. He's 5'6". Right? He's a little, little guy. And 
if I was managing Tim Bradley, I would advise him to move back down to 140 pounds because 140 pounds is a lot of lucrative fights to be made if you know they can sort out the Aram Golden Boy differences, which they do occasionally. Right, last year we had Eris Landi Lara against Vanes Matarosian. Right, one top ranked fighter and one Golden Boy fighter. So they can make these things happen, right, if the desire is there. All right, and it's the same with Tim Bradley, I guess, against Keith Furman. Right, Keith Furman is he works with Golden Boy. He's not necessarily tied to Golden Boy, but he works with them. Um, he's an Al Heyman fighter, and uh, obviously Tim Bradley is with Bob Arum and Top Rank. So um, you know, these things can happen. Do you understand? Don't let no one believe, uh, convince you that. Aram and Golden Boy can never do business because they do do business. They done business last year, All right? That's just one example. So um, yeah, I think that Bradley would be better off at what I consider his more natural weight, which is 140 pounds. Especially being as short as he is, I think he, I think there's more money to be had down there, and I think the fights down there are easier for him, more winnable. He's already beat Lamont Peterson. Right, you got a guy like Lucas Matisse down there who's just as short as Tim Bradley is. He's like five six, five seven. Right? Um like I say, he's already beat Peterson, you got Matisse, you got Garcia, who I believe is pretty limited. Um and these are all guys who you know quite a lot of them have a decent following. These guys. So I think Tim Bradley would be, would be better off dropping back down to hundred and forty pounds and vacating his WBO title. Uh, rather than take on a young kid like Keith Furman, who he's got a good chance of beating Bradley, <laughs> right? Let's be real. He's a big guy. He hits extremely hard. He's got a good chance of beating Bradley. I'm not saying I'm not saying you know Bradley can't win that fight either, but it's a dangerous, dangerous fight. And I think Tim Bradley's better off you know, with these young lions coming up. I think he's better off in his more natural weight division of 140 pounds. That's just my opinion. Um. But right now, Furman is dangerous for anyone at 147. He's dangerous for anyone just because he's got that power. There's no one around right now who I think could exploit uh, Furman's lack of defense, technique, precision on the back foot. Right? I think to get to Furman, you're going to have to push him back and um, you know put him under pressure. And pick him apart that way, wear him down, right? Be able to tuck up nice and tight like Zavik did, but add more to your game. Maybe a good strong jab as you come in and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Um, but to me, there's uh, there's no one around in boxing 147 pounds like that right now. So you know, if you put him in with a Mayweather, um, you know, uh, Kell Brook, Alexander, Malinaji. Hey, he's got a good, he's got a good chance of landing a power shot against any of those guys and taking them out, right? I wouldn't if I was you know Furman's manager, I wouldn't hesitate to put him in with any of the champions at 147 pounds right now. I wouldn't even hesitate because right? he's got the power. He's he's naturally bigger than all those guys, stronger well, than most of them. Maybe a Kell Brook might be the same kind of size as him, but apart from that, you know he's naturally bigger than bigger and stronger than all those guys and hits a lot harder than they do. Um, he's quick, he's aggressive, you know, he hits with both hands, throws body shots, he's dangerous, like I say, he's not the finished article just yet, but, uh, that power will take him a fair way, that power will take him a fair way, man, um, he says he wants Malinaji, Malinaji's not interested in the fight, he says Furman's not big enough in the game yet, what that really means is, Malinaji wants to be paid well if someone's going to beat the shit out of him. That's what he means. <laughs> right? He wants to be paid well if he's going to lose by KO. Um, that's that's what it, that statement really means. Um, Floyd Mayweather. Possible opponent for Floyd Mayweather. Uh, I know that uh, Furman is on HBO. Mayweather's on Showtime. So I don't know how that's going to work out. Um, I don't know whether Mayweather would take that fight. You know, A young, strong kid like that. I'm not sure Mayweather would fancy it at this stage of his career, 36 years old. I don't know. Um, but, you know, I don't see why Furman can't fight Floyd Mayweather, right? Let's say he fights Bradley, beats Bradley, or Bradley vacates and he fights for the vacant WBO title, or he fights the winner of Kell Brook against uh, Alexander and wins. Then he's in the Mayweather sweepstakes. Why not? Yeah, why not? Ortiz got a shot. All he had to do was beat Berto. 
<laughs> right? And he got a shot straight away. The fight before that, he looked like shit against Lamont Peterson. 140 pounds. So all he had to do is move up, have one, you know, decent win against Andre Burton, and then he, he got a title shot against... Uh, well, he, he got a shot against Mayweather anyway. He was already a champion. He got a shot against Mayweather. So, yeah, there's no reason why Furman can't be in the in the Mayweather sweepstakes as well. So, we'll just have to wait and see how it goes. Um, He's definitely a work in progress. Definitely not the finish, finished article. Definitely makes mistakes, especially on the back foot. To me, don't look comfortable. Um, Even though he did win this fight, uh, Jan Zavik just didn't have the ability to exploit the mistakes that Furman was making so yeah anyway hit me up in the comment section and let me know what you lot think this is Hatman I'm out